By the end of this video, you're going to know how to connect Bubble with Anthropic's Claude API and build a text generation app using that integration. This video is brought to you by No Code MBA. If you want to learn how to take this video to the next level and learn so much more about how to integrate with a variety of different AI APIs and build much more complex apps on top of it, check out the link in the description uh, to go to No Code MBA's Building Apps with AI course, which has hours of project-based tutorials uh, covering uh, topics like this, but in a lot more detail. So the first thing that you want to do when you get into Bubble is go to your plugin tab and we're going to add a plugin and we're going to add the API connector plugin. So when we add that API connector plugin, that's going to give us the ability to connect to other APIs and other services. In this case, we're going to be connecting to Anthropic, which is the uh, creator of the Claude uh, API. So we can go ahead, I'm going to refresh because it said I had a low connection for some reason. Um, so I'm going to refresh the app here and we will go back to the plugins tab as soon as it loads. And we can click add another API. I'm going to name this Claude. And then I'm going to go into another window and I'm on the Anthropic user documentation. So we're going to go down to the text generation capabilities. And here you can read a little bit about what is possible using the Claude um, API. So things like text summarization, content generation, data entity extraction, things like that. Um, similar to using OpenAI's GPT-4 API. And everything about this is similar. So actually, if you learn how to do this, uh, you can probably go to the OpenAI API documentation and learn how to do that as well. Um, you can also check out the link in the description to go to our Building Apps with AI course, which covers OpenAI's um, API connections uh, as well in a lot more detail. Um, but we're going to go to the API reference here. Uh, typically, you want to look for uh, API reference. User guides is where you kind of just get a high-level overview of how an API works. The API reference is what's going to give you the specific documentation of how to uh, connect it to your actual um, bubble app. So uh, what I'm going to do is go down to Messages, Create a Message. So we're going to go to the Create a Message API reference. And then here, what we want to do is look for that shell language. That's the language that we want and uh, the format that's going to allow us to add it into our uh, Bubble API connector. So the first thing in Bubble API connector, we're going to go to the authentication and change it to private key and header. Now what this is going to do is allow us to privately uh, send our API key to Anthropic, and then Anthropic will read that, know that we're logged in, and it'll know our account, and then it'll send back the, uh, the response uh, from the uh, the API call. So uh, we're doing a private key and header. The key name, we can get that by looking at this um, example request. A request is basically an API call that you send to uh, another service, in this case, Anthropic. We're going to copy X API key and copy that exactly with the same exact capitalization. And I'm going to uh, paste that as the key name. And then we're going to have key value and development key value. So we're going to get those in a minute, but right now I'm just going to set up the rest of the API call. So if we go down, so these are the shared headers. We're going to have the same shared header API key for all of our API calls. So in Bubble, you have uh, kind of the overarching uh, connection. So in this case, the connection is to Claude. And then we have individual API calls. So uh, you know, creating a message and getting a message back is uh, really the only API call that Claude has, but there could be others like image generation through the same service. Uh, so that's kind of where the service and overarching service comes in, and then the individual API calls. So this call specifically is a post call. Um, you can see it's post by that, and it's post because we're sending information, uh, posting it to the API and getting a response. So we're going to change this to post. I'm going to rename it um, uh, message. We're going to use it as an action. Now in Bubble, using it as an action allows us to use it in the workflow tab. And then the URL here is right here. So it's post 
here's the URL that we're going to send. Copy that and paste that in. So uh, we know it's post that, and you can see how Bubble kind of maps its API connector to how APIs are set up. Then we're going to add some more headers, because we can see there's two more headers in this example. So we have Anthropic version, so I'm going to copy that, paste that in, and then paste in the date there. And then we also have content type, I'm going to copy that and then the application JSON and copy that. Okay, great. And then what we have is uh, this request body content. So I'm gonna copy that. We're gonna go down to a body and just paste that in. So paste it in exactly like that. The model, Claude 3 Opus, um, this is the Opus more powerful model. You can just change that to one of the other models if you want. Uh, so if we go to, for example, the user, gu user guides and we go to models overview, we can change that to Claude 3 Sonnet or Haiku, which I'm going to do just because it's a, a uh, less expensive model, um, although one API call is not going to be very expensive um, anyway. So I'm just going to go back to the API reference, the messages um, one, and then here you can see uh, the format that it wants the messages to be in and then how it wants it to be if you're sending uh, multiple messages. So role, role user content, role assistant content. In our case, we're just going to send one message. So it'll be the role, the user, and then content. Please check out the Building Apps with AI course on NoCode MBA to learn how to send multiple messages back um, in this kind of API call, but in this case, we're just going to do something really simple to show you how to do the initial connection. And then there's also a lot of other um, parameters that you can send through, such as max tokens, um, the maximum tokens to generate before stopping. Um, there's other things that you can send as well. Um, one thing to note is you cannot stream on Bubble using uh, this uh, the API connector, because the API connector is sending uh, a call and getting a response. Streaming is streaming the response using server side uh, sent events, which is something that uh, there are typically bubble plugins that allow you to do that, um, but uh, you can't do that directly through um, the API connector. So just something to note, uh, kind of one limitation that you are going to be working with here. Okay. So we have the role user, content, hello world. We could change that content to anything we want. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, now we need to get our, our API key. So I'm going to show you how to actually get an API key. So the first thing you need to do is actually go to Anthropic and create a developer account. So it's console.anthropic.com. That's the URL that you want to go with. And then we're going to go ahead and create an account. So once you create an account, you're going to be here on your dashboard and you want to click get API keys. Then you're going to go ahead and click create key here on the top. You can name your key. So I just named it demo app. I'm going to create the key. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to delete it after this video um, because if someone has this key, they can technically uh, use it to generate responses using uh, your own account. And then I'm going to go back and put in the key values here. So now let's go ahead and click initialize the call. And if everything uh, was set up correctly, then we're going to get a response. And here we have a response which says text, hello, I'm an AI assistant created by Anthropic. How can I assist you today? You can also click show the raw data to just see the actual JSON response. This is called JSON, kind of the format that it's sent back in. Okay, great. So I'm going to click save. You have to click save. And now your call is initialized. And that means that you can use it um, in your bubble app. And remember to make sure this is set as use as action so you can use it in your bubble uh, workflows. So now we're going to go back to the design tab. And we're just going to do a really, really simple input output uh, so that you can see how it's set up. Um, again, check out NoCode MBA's course to learn how to do this uh, in a much more complex and built out way. Uh, but the purpose of this video is just a simple way to know how to connect these APIs, uh, API um, with uh, Bubble. So on the, on the left side, I'm going to search for input, uh, drag and input over. I'm just going to do everything in kind of the fixed 
uh, layout where it's just all drag and drop. Um, again, this is not how I would build an app if there were actually going to be users on it, but um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I think it works well. Um, ask a question. Sure, I spell that right. Uh, here's the input, input question. Let's add a button. Drag that in. It'll say ask. And then what I want to do is add a text element below here and make it really big. And then what I'm going to do is this text element, I'm going to add a custom state to it where I'm going to save the response uh, to this custom state. A custom state is a way to save uh, a piece of data, not in the database, but just on the user's browser, essentially. Um, so we're going to add a new custom state, which is going to be the response text is the type of custom state. And then the dynamic data is, uh, when I'm going to uh, rename this text response. So we're going to search for text response, which is the element here, and it's the response. So that's the custom state that we're saving to this text element. So now what we want to do is add a workflow to this ask button. So I'm going to go to ask, click add workflow. We're going to add an action, which is going to say, um, we're going to go to plugins and it's the Claude message uh, plugin. Actually, what I'm going to do is go back to the plugin. I want to make one more little change. So we want to add a dynamic value to this content. So I'm going to delete hello world and I'm going to delete every part of that, including the quotations. Add a um, these two symbols, the left and right symbol, and then name it um, question. So now we have a dynamic value in our API call called question. I'm going to uncheck private because if we check private, we can't dynamically update it from the app. And then I'm going to go back to the workflow. And now what we're going to do is all we have to do in this workflow is add in the question text, which is inserting dynamic data. It's the input questions value. The reason it's input question is because we named that element input question. And then this is very important, something that a lot of people uh, miss, is we want to do formatted as JSON safe. So this is going to do two things. First, it's going to add quotations around the uh, text, which is something that we need to do uh, to format it correctly as JSON. And that's why we took the quotations out uh, before. And it's also going to uh, uh, take out and, and update the input uh, and remove any characters um, that might potentially uh, cause an issue with the API call and make it so that it's not JSON um, safe. So uh, it's going to do two things here, really important to do to make sure that the API call runs correctly. So the next thing we want to do is save that response somewhere in our app. So in this case, we're saving it as a custom state. So we're going to set a state of an element. The, the uh, state where we are saving is text responses response because we we set that up earlier. The value is the result of step ones. Uh, and then we're going to do content first item text. I'm going to show you how I know that. So if I go back to the plugins and uh, what I can do is manually and click manually enter API response so we can see the response. So it's the content. Uh, it's the first item because it's set up as an array with these um, brackets, but even though there's only one response, so it's just the first response. And then it is the first response's text. And that is the kind of the part of that JSON that we're targeting. So we'll go back to the uh, design tab. Let me just make sure I set that up correctly. So that's it. And then because we're setting this to that custom state, it should automatically show up. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, preview. And here we go. We are in our previewed app. Let's just say hello and let's click ask. And then we just give it a second. And here we go. We got a response. And what's cool too is because we used Claude's uh, cheaper, quicker model, we get a response really, really quickly. Um, so that's really cool. Um, we can ask it whatever we want. Um, we could say, could you please write a tweet today 
about uh, technology. Something really simple. This is the this the kind of less powerful uh, model from uh, Anthropic, so it might not be the best possible quality, uh, but it might be totally fine. And if you update the model to the Claude Opus model, for example, um, you're going to get uh, even better responses. So I hope that this was a helpful overview of how to connect Bubble to uh, the Anthropic Claude API. Um, again, be sure to check out the No Code MBA Building Apps with AI course if you want to take this to the next level. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please just leave a comment below. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all of our future uh, content on here for free. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.